This Rust macro saved me 1028 lines of code. Impressive. And today I'm going to break down exactly how I made it. Why does it look so beautiful? What the f*** is this piece of sh**? Now, this coding question we will dissect today is a part of a tower defense typing game that I'm making using Rust and Bevy. After this, why don't you check out my devlog on that. For this game, I'm utilizing assets as much as I can. Almost everything content-wise is a file. Tower definitions, spells, enemies, power-ups, maps. I use it everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. As I sat there programming my assets, it started noticing a reoccurring pattern. In fact, this pattern occurred more than 10 times. Oh, it looks like a perfect time to put the code in question into a reusable function. Refactoring, yay! But how foolish I was, for this code cannot be generalized in regular Rust code. I needed a macro. Okay, we're gonna start here with an empty Rust project. So I can clearly show you guys the issue I had and how I solved it. Now I'm using the Bevy game engine, so you're going to see some magical Bevy code that might be confusing if you've never seen Bevy before, but you you don't need to fully understand Bevy to follow along, uh, hopefully. <laughs> this is all you need to make a simple Bevy application. If we launch this, we'll get a window. Let's make a little game, shall we? Well, we're not gonna have any graphics, it's just going to be loading assets. <laughs> Fun! Actually, we're gonna be good boys and not put everything in one single file. We're immediately going to make a new file, call it spell. Our game needs spell assets. First, we're gonna need some includes. Then let's make a struct that will be our spell asset. Why don't we add a damage field? I should mention, this is not a tutorial, so you don't have to follow along. This is just a good way to represent the data that I'm working with in my code. We derive from debug so we can print line information about this asset. The serialize is from the serde crate, and it allows us to serialize all of the data into strings. Maybe you use JSON files, XML, we're gonna use a format called RON. Bevy requires us to derive from type UID and type path to give this asset a unique identifier, and this is how you do that. Now, Bevy does not know how to load our asset from files, so in order to specify how to do that, we're gonna need a spell asset loader. Bevy has a trait called asset loader, so we're gonna implement that on our spell asset loader. The syntax is very ugly, they will probably fix this in the future. But anyway, it has a load function, and here we can get the bytes of the file. So we load the bytes from file, and we want to produce a spell asset. This single line of code to serialize the string bytes into a spell asset. And to insert this spell asset into Bevy, we need to use this function called setDefaultAsset. The last thing we need to tell Bevy is what files are considered a spell asset. Let's call our spell files spell.run. Let's go to the main file and load some assets. First we need to teach Bevy that we have an asset that exists. And then we're going to add our asset loader we just made. I'm gonna make a function called setup so we can load our files. And we can load files through the asset server. Using the asset server we're going to load a handle to our spell asset. So we call the load function and our spell will be called arcane missile. We never call the setup function so let's add it to the Bevy ecosystem. When we run our application we'll get a warning because there is no file called arcane missile.spell.run. Maybe you forgot this is a video about Rust macros. Don't worry, we're soon gonna add a macro, but I need to paint the whole picture here. I'm gonna make a folder called assets, and in here we're gonna put our arcane missile file. The spell asset had a field called damage, and this is how you write it in run. When we run the application, the warning is gone, so we successfully loaded our assets. To prove that it works, I'm quickly going to write up a function that will print out the asset when it's loaded. As you can see, the value is 100. We can change that to 107. Tada, it works. We are blazingly fast going to add another asset to our game, the hero asset. I'm gonna copy the file and change the name of the spell asset to hero asset. Let's remove the damage field from the hero and instead the hero will have a health field. Just to differentiate hero and spells in this example we're making. Of course I also need to register the hero asset type, the hero asset loader, and then we can load a hero asset, why not? Let's make a hero asset, set the health, and bam, speed run, we have two different game assets. And here is where the macro comes in. Keep in mind, in my game I have a lot of assets. And making a loader for every single type, it's not a lot of code, but there is more things we're gonna get into soon. So let's make a macro. I'm gonna make a file called util where we will put our macro. To make our macros available outside of this file, we need to put it inside of a module. And here we go, this is the syntax of a Rust macro, we'll call it create asset loader. And to make it visible outside of this file, we need to do this. 
In our macro we can have parameters inside of these parentheses and our code goes inside of the brackets. Let's go ahead and copy our spell asset loader code and just paste it into this macro. We're just essentially moving where we call our code. Now inside of the spell asset file we're instead going to call this macro. And nothing crazy has happened yet, the code compiles like it used to, but now the magic may begin. What do you think happens if we call this macro twice? Well, we get an error because we try to define the spell asset loader twice. In our macro, let's add a parameter called loader name and it will be of the type identifier. Using this parameter, we can then set the name of this asset loader. We also want the asset we're generating to be generic. So let's add a parameter for that as well. Asset type input is of a type identifier. Now we can serialize any data type we want. There's one more thing to fix and that is the file extensions. We will basically move out this part of the code into the parameter. So let's call this new parameter extensions and it will be of the type expression. An expression can be almost anything. Basically the code we pass into this parameter will be copy pasted. Then let's fix our macro call by passing in the appropriate parameters. And now the magic begins. We can now remove all of this code in the hero file and replace it with the macro. Of course I need to pass in the appropriate parameters but we now have one line of code that creates an asset loader and life is beautiful. Now imagine we had 10 more assets. The main file would look something like this. The asset registration and loader still manually needs to be inserted. Can't we also automate that? Yes we can. In Bevy we can create something called a plugin. And with plugins we can package Bevy functionality. So let's move the asset and loader registration of the spell into this plugin. And now we can use that plugin instead. Let's make this a part of a macro. So let's copy paste that into the macro. And now the name of the plugin needs to be a parameter. And the rest of the variables we already have parameters for. Let's fix the macro calls by adding the plugin name parameter. And now in our main file all we need to do to register the asset type and the loader is to add these asset plugins. Everything up until now has been pretty cool but let's do something absolutely crazy with this macro. We're finally gonna see what these weird parts of the macro actually does. But first, I want my hero to be able to cast spells. We essentially want the hero to point to another spell asset. In Bevy we use handles to point to other assets. So that's what we're gonna add to the hero class, a handle to a spell asset. There is one problem though. This Serdy library doesn't know how to deserialize a bevy handle. And here's where things get tricky. We can add a skip attribute to the spell handle field. Deserialize will now skip looking for this field in the file and the handle will be set to the default implementation of a bevy handle which luckily is implemented. A default handle is simply a handle that doesn't point to anything. Now we want our hero files to contain a string path to the asset so we have to add that. Great we have a path to the asset but this handle is not valid valid. We need to fix that. We need to figure out when we have loaded an asset and then fix this handle. We need a new function. For now I'm gonna call it finalize hero assets. And in Bevy we can use an event reader to listen to asset events. Asset events of what? The hero asset. We loop through all the events that happened that frame and this asset event is actually an enum that we can match on. When a hero asset is created, modified or removed. We don't get the raw data of the asset, we get the handle to that asset. We also need to access our hero assets. Look at all of this code, it's magic, baby, it's absolute magic. So, when a hero asset is created, we want to fix the handle. First we're gonna get the actual hero asset, which we can use this handle for. And now we're gonna need the asset server so that we can load a handle to the spell asset. We will load a spell asset using the path of the hero asset, and then we can set the handle. Yes! I don't actually care when a hero asset is modified or removed, so what I'm gonna do is simply do nothing in those cases. This function needs to be public, and let's actually run this function in our main file. Now before I run this, I need to fix something. When we load the assets in the setup function, as you see we get handles to the respective assets. Well, when we leave this function, these handles goes out of scope and no one is pointing to these assets anymore. Because of this, the assets will get removed by Bevy and we don't want them. I want the hero asset to stick around, so I'm gonna do some Bevy sorcery. I will make a new resource that contains a list of handles. Handles to any type of asset. And in our setup function, I'm simply going to load these assets and put these handles into this new resource instead. 
because we store these handles in this truck and we add this resource to bevy, the handles will stay around in the entirety of the application's runtime. We're getting pretty deep into the bevy territory here. This will work. Yes, trust me, bro. If we run the game now, if you look very closely, you'll notice our hero asset has health, it has a path, blah blah blah, and the handle is now strong. That means the hero is successfully pointing to our spell asset. Of course, we aren't doing anything fun visually with it, but trust me, bro, the hero can now get access to the spell handle and do stuff with it if it wants to. Now, what is the point of all of this? Well, in my tower defense game, my projectiles, for example, is constructed with a large amount of handles to other assets. And programming this exact handle processing we just wrote, I don't want to do manually. That would be a lot of code. For example, maybe we had an enemy asset. Actually, I'm gonna make one right now. Just copy the hero file and rename it to enemy asset. For fun, the enemy asset won't have a spell. It will have a on death spell. When we finalize the enemy asset, we now need to load the on death spell path into the handle. And of course, if we compare the hero asset and the enemy assets, this code is very similar. Let's put this into a macro. I'm gonna copy paste the finalize assets function into our macro. Will now be of, well, the asset type and the assets we're accessing and mutating will be of asset type. But wait a minute, what is this? We are accessing specific field names into this asset. The hero has a spell handle, but the enemy has a on death spell handle. So this will not work. So we're gonna need a new parameter and actually what we want is a repeatable parameter where we can specify the field name and the handle we want it to transform into. So bear with me here when I write this new parameter. This will be a repeating parameter where we need the name of the field and we want that to transform into the handle name. Because we put this into parentheses with this dollar sign and this asterisk, that means we can repeat this as many times as we want. I'm gonna rename the hero assets to just assets. Now instead of accessing the specific name, spell handle, we're going to find this repeating parameter we just made. And we need to do that inside of this block. So we want to set the assets handle name by loading the path which is specified as a string name. And this code block will be repeated for every single parameter we put in. We are however never calling this function finalize assets, so we need to add that to the plugin that we made previously. Now we can remove the finalize assets function and instead in our hero asset we want to convert the spell path into a spell handle. If we run our application now, the hero asset, as you see, still works. Now we can very quickly add other fields to this hero asset. For example, maybe we have a basic attack. All we need to do to load a handle to that asset using our new path is to add these fields into our macro. Of course, I need to update the hero file, so the basic attacks now point to an asset. And life is good again. We just went from having a dozen asset loaders, a bunch of functions to convert paths to handles, to now a single macro. Now, if you look at the original macro I showed at the start of this video, you'll notice these very weird characters I have scattered around. And the reason for that is that in my tower defense game, I simply have a few more functionalities. For example, if we look on that macro, we'll see I have implemented functionality to load an array of assets and fix that array of asset handles. I basically have three different things I want this macro to be able to do, and I use these characters, the question mark and all of these things. It's just to differentiate what functionality I'm implementing. So all the data that uses a single handle goes in the first part, and after that character, I can auto implement loading an array of assets, and in the last part, I have something else. That is the total breakdown of this macro that saves me 1028 lines of code. I hope you learned something, I hope it was interesting. Big shout out to my patrons for making this channel possible, especially my level 3 supporters. Sing, Twitch, Legend, Do, Apex, Alexander, Vester, Card, Ericsson, Avarian, Knight, Gareth, Stephen, Turbo, Waffle, Terpsy, Cora, David, Klostenban, Racing, Tainzer. Thank you so much, also my level 2 patrons. I see you guys, and my level 1 supporters. Thank you, thank you.